Welcome back on this June 9th, 2011. The Atlantic is relatively quiet out in the tropics right now, but we'll take a look at things and if anything may try to form or get going over the next week. And we also have Major Hurricane Adrian now in the eastern Pacific, so we'll take a quick look at that as well. Here is the latest Atlantic visible imagery. As you can see, the entire Gulf of Mexico, much of the Caribbean Sea, and all of the deep tropical Atlantic is void of any significant weather. The only exception is out here over the Bahamas, which is to be expected. We expected this to occur for the last three or four days now. Basically what occurred was 94L was located to the south of Cuba for about five days straight before it got shunted off toward the north as several of the model members had been advertising. And fortunately it does not look like this disorganized mass of convection is going to do much in terms of organization as upper level winds remain fairly unfavorable for any type of tropical development thanks to the presence of this persistent tropical upper tropospheric trough that's been dangling across the greater Antilles, Florida Peninsula and Bahamas for at least the past week and this upper level low that's the main cause behind it is really not going to move out of the picture anytime soon so unfavorable conditions will persist in the West Atlantic through the foreseeable future and at the very most we'll see a weak low come out of this and then begin to move more toward the north and really not do a whole lot. So looking into the future we'll see what the 12Z GFS shows and to sum things up fairly well the model really doesn't show much in the way of any tropical action over the next six to seven days. There's really no standout areas of low pressure and the 12Z Canadian run is in very similar agreement with that. If anything it develops the low pressure near the Bahamas a little bit more but as to be expected, the Canadian model seems to almost always overdevelop weak areas of low pressure, so that's really no surprise. And finally, the 12Z ECMWF does not show much in the way of any tropical action either. This is the current time, day one, day two, day three, day four. As you can see, any remnant low pressure o over the southwest Atlantic has been pulled into this non-tropical area of low pressure near or just off of the coast of the mid-Atlantic in northeast states and by day five there's really just not a whole lot out there the subtropical ridge over much of the central and eastern Atlantic is dominating the pattern with the intertropical convergence zone suppressed well to the south with really not a whole lot cooking in the Gulf of Mexico Caribbean or West Atlantic at this time it's fairly early in the 2011 hurricane season and June is by far not the most active month it's usually relatively slow um, only half or less of the seasons actually produce tropical cyclone activity during this month and also the negative phase of the Madden Julian oscillation is passing through the basin as you can see by these colors now moving into the Atlantic Caribbean and Gulf so it looks like things are going to be relatively quiet for the next few weeks but that's not to say we can still get a uh, we can't get a stray tropical system the MJO is just one parameter to look at it doesn't really overwrite everything else completely we have a completely different picture out there in the eastern Pacific right now. This is now Major Hurricane Adrian. It was just upgraded to a Category 3 within the last few hours. As you can see on the visible imagery, this storm is very well defined. It's very impressive. We have a nicely well defined eye within a central dense overcast. The outflow in all quadrants is very impressive. It's very well defined. Uh, it's, the storm overall is very symmetrical in nature and that's thanks to the fact that the storm really has no wind shear to contend with at the moment if we take a look at the more zoomed in water vapor imagery you see that this outflow is able to expand in all directions as free as freely as it wants to without being impeded by any westerly winds aloft and again there's just another quick look at the enhanced infrared uh, if the storm were to continue to intensify further we may see a slightly better appearance of the eye it might become a little less shrouded with cloud cover and become just a little bit more prominent on the upcoming satellite passes. The good news with regard to the forecast track remains. It still looks like this storm is going to remain well off the coast of Mexico. This is the official forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. As you can see, the storm is forecast to remain well off the coast of mainland Mexico. Perhaps the greatest threat along these coastal areas will be the threat of high wave action along with the risk of rip currents. So people are advised to be aware of that if you're going to be traveling along Mexico's beaches over the next several days. As you can see by far the model consensus is also in agreement with the official forecast track with the general continued motion toward the west and west northwest. Only a very limited amount of model outliers exist that take this more toward Mexico and these are two solutions that cannot be believed at this current time. So why is this expected to continue? Why will Adrian not turn into Mexico? Well 
This is the lo latest look at the mid-level steering parameters, and as you can see, there's a fairly distinct mid-level ridge of upper-level heights over the western half of Mexico into the southwest United States, and this ridge will prevent our storm from turning north anytime soon. It's going to have to continue moving westward because the laws of physics do not work out with this type of thing moving directly into the ridge that way. Here's the latest water vapor imagery, and you can kind of make out the presence of that mid-level ridging over Mexico. You really don't see much in the way of any troughiness coming down immediately or too quickly, and that's because of this blocking ridge in place. Now, as this storm begins to move into the western side of the ridge, or the western periphery of it, it would typically try to turn more toward the north, but once it gets along the western side of that ridge, we're going to begin to see the storm encounter more southwest wind shear aloft, and that's really going to beat down the system fairly quickly. And then by that time, the storm will have weakened significantly, and thus the reason why it would be controlled more by low-level steering. And the low-level steering parameter or pattern will continue to support a more westerly motion out into the open waters of the eastern Pacific. By that point, the storm will not only have to encounter strong vertical wind shear, but it will also begin to move into much cooler water temperatures. This is the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm, and once it moves west of this, it's really too cold to sustain any type of tropical cyclone, and Hurricane Adrian will quickly weaken below tropical depression status once it's out into this area. So that's your tropical weather update for this Thursday. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please come again sometime later this evening or tomorrow. We'll definitely have another video by then. And we'll just keep a, another eye out on the Atlantic just to make sure the models don't try to develop any of the tropical system over the next week or so. And, of course, we'll continue to monitor Major Hurricane Adrian, and we'll make sure that that storm is not doing anything unexpected. As of right now, it's supposed to be no threat to mainland Mexico. So that's all for now. Check back soon again.